This is a short trailer, about a few facts, related to the sustainable metallurgy of aluminium, and its alloys. A full class about this topic, including aspects, such as the primary production through electrolysis, sustainable alloy design, and advanced recycling methods will follow. Aluminium is one of the fastest growing markets in the field of structural alloys. It serves in many applications, where low weight and high strength are required. Aluminium is very corrosion resistant, due to the thin and dense oxide layer formed on its surface. Its melting point is very low, only 660 degrees centigrade. This means, that melting aluminium scraps into new material, comes at very low energy costs, only 5% of what is used for its primary synthesis. However, aluminium alloys are also very composition sensitive, and retrieve their good mechanical properties from a complex set of nano precipitates. Therefore, aluminium alloys should not be mixed, but require very good scrap separation prior to recycling. The most important feature of aluminium alloys, regarding sustainability, is the high difference between the energy consumed for primary and secondary synthesis. The term secondary synthesis, refers here to the remelting of aluminium from scraps. While primary synthesis, through electrolysis, costs 45 kilowatt hours per kilogram of metal produced, the melting of scrap into new material, costs only 2.8 kilowatt hours per kilogram. Another factor, making a huge difference in the material's sustainability, is whether the electrical energy for the primary synthesis comes from sustainable sources, or from fossil fuels. Since aluminium alloys are highly sensitive to composition changes, aluminium scrap sorting is one of the most essential tasks in secondary synthesis. Mixing different aluminium alloys, can lead to the formation of large and blocky intermetallic particles, that form during solidification, and make the material brittle, and susceptible to failure. Another important aspect in the context of secondary synthesis, is the limited availability of certain high quality scraps on the one hand, and some less desired scrap types in the recycling loop, such as certain cast alloys, on the other hand. This comparison analyzes the carbon footprint of an aluminium drinking can. The color bar gives the carbon footprint in grams of CO2, embodied in a 330 milliliters sized can. The range between minimum and maximum depends on the specific origin of the fossil fuels, that were used during production. An aluminium can, that uses less than 50% of recycled material, and correspondingly more than 50% of primary aluminium, produced by using fossil fuels for electrolysis, has indeed a very high carbon footprint. The smallest carbon footprint applies, when a high content of recycled material is used, with only minimum input of primary aluminium, and when most of the cans are recycled into new ones. Also, the use of renewable energies strongly reduces the carbon footprint of such a product. The main take-home message of this slide is, that not certain products are sustainable or non-sustainable, but the product's sustainability depends to a great deal on the origin of the energy, and the raw materials that are used to manufacture it, and its end-of-use recycling rate. This is a rough overview, of the many different types of aluminium alloys, and their compositional ranges. Details related to the sustainability and recycling of these alloy classes, will be the subject of an individual lecture. Here I only give three snapshots of quite different scenarios. A high silicon content of up to 14 weight percent is commonly used for cast products, since the silicon compensates the thermal shrinkage of the aluminium and enhances castability. Huge quantities of such alloys serve in automotive engine blocks. However, with the transition of mobility from gasoline to electrical engines, they are no longer used, and new products or alloys must be invented, to consume such sort of scrap, which will enter the market during the next 15 years. It must be emphasized, that such a high silicon content cannot be tolerated in any of the existing wrought alloys. A similar situation applies for the 2000 series alloys with high copper content. 
This element lends the material very high strength, but it is undesired in most other aluminium alloys. Iron is another element that enters through the scrap and through the recycling of cast alloys, but it is undesired in most wrought alloys, such as the 5000 and 6000 series materials, as it promotes formation of brittle intermetallics. Aluminium alloys with high copper content are the most widely used heat treatable alloys for aircraft materials, mainly due to their high strength to weight ratio. However, the copper rich precipitations, particularly aluminium 2 copper intermetallics, and their spinodal precursors, which strengthen these materials, have negative effects on their corrosion properties. Hence, scrap entering the market from aerospace products, is typically undesired when making new aluminium alloys. An interesting concept is, to let the liquid aluminium not cool down, before shipping it to customers, where it has to be melted again for continuous casting, but instead bring the liquid material directly to the customer. This does not only save the energy required for reheating, but the liquid metal serves also as a buffer medium for storing energy. The operation of the electrolysis, for reducing the metal, can be done in a flexible way, by traded electrical power when it is inexpensive, such as at nights and weekends. In such a business concept, where liquid metal is transported on public highways, safety is of course an important issue. This graph shows the global demand of aluminium, highlighted in terms of two categories, namely, aluminium made from primary production, and remelting of scrap aluminium. The data show, that only about a third of the aluminium is recycled from scrap. Therefore, research in this field aims at increasing the total recycling rate of aluminium. This requires to not only think in established alloy classes, but also about new alloy concepts, that combine different aluminium classes, and their respective alloying elements. Such materials, that combine established types of aluminium alloys, with the aim to make them more tolerant against tramp elements intruding from scraps, are referred to as crossover alloys or uni alloys. This is a little exercise, about the difference between indirect and direct effects on sustainability. The example is a body in white structure for a sport utility vehicle with a mass of more than 1,700 kilograms, containing about 9 weight percent of aluminium in the original design. Let us start with indirect effects that improve the sustainability of this vehicle. A weight reduction of nearly 30 percent, translating to 474 kilograms, can be achieved when increasing the aluminium content up to 37 weight percent. This leads to a linear reduction of the fuel consumption. With that, lightweight structural materials, such as high-strength aluminium alloys or high-strength steels, contribute substantially to more fuel-efficient vehicles. A second step can be taken by improving also the construction's direct sustainability. This means, that for all the materials that are used for the body in white, more sustainable production and manufacturing can be used. For the case of aluminium, an amount of 35% CO2 and energy reduction can be achieved, when using recycled aluminium, made from scrap, instead of aluminium alloys made from conventional primary production. Let us look closer at the recycling of aluminium alloys. These materials can usually not be mixed among the different grades, but must be carefully sorted prior to remelting. This is due to the fact, that current aluminium alloys are highly optimized for strength, ductility, surface appearance, corrosion, toughness and formability, to name but a few key features. When blending undesired tramp elements into such established alloy grades, some of these properties can substantially worsen, for example, through the change of the precipitation kinetics segregation, the formation of undesired and large intermetallic phases, or changes in the precipitation-free zones, that surround the decorated grain boundaries. The best way to get clean scrap, is closed-loop recycling, where the scrap is directly collected during production and manufacturing.
In such cases the scrap collected is well defined and can be directly melted again. A large fraction of the aluminium scrap, however, is post-consumer scrap, which is mixed. In such cases, X-ray and plasma-assisted chemical online analysis methods can be used, to classify alloys with respect to their prevalent alloying elements, such as for instance manganese, copper, iron, or zinc. As the results, obtained from the online chemical analysis, are in the form of complex spectra, advanced machine learning techniques are increasingly used for the identification of the alloy encountered. Combining this online analysis with fast computer monitoring, optical particle detection and tracking, and a mechanical sorting system, allows to assign and sort scrap particles to specific aluminium alloy classes. Details of these recent advanced recycling and sorting techniques will be the subject of a full class in this lecture series. This movie gives an example, from a research project on impurity-tolerant aluminium alloys. It shows data from a tomographic atom probe measurement, conducted on a 3000 series manganese containing aluminium alloy, used for drinking cans. Atom probe tomography is a method, that allows to measure the chemical composition of complex materials at the near atomic scale. It works by combining ionization and field evaporation of atoms from tip-shaped sample surfaces under high electrical fields, combined with a mass-to-charge flight spectrometry and a position-sensitive multi-channel plate detector. The data show, that besides the nominal alloying elements, such as about 1% manganese, 1% magnesium and a bit more than 0.1% copper, a number of further elements accumulate over the multiple recycling and remelting cycles it has been going through. It is therefore an important question in current research to understand how many and how much of these tramp elements can be tolerated in recycled aluminium alloys. A further question is, whether alloys can be developed, that are upfront designed for high impurity tolerance and hence, for high scrap usage. This was only a short trailer, about the sustainable metallurgy of aluminium and its alloys, and about the eminent role that aluminium alloys play, as key enablers for energy-saving lightweight design. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please stay tuned for the full lecture.